Hey guys, what's going on? Jay here. This is SmartHelping.com. Uh, really excited to get back on uh, making videos. I haven't done a, that many in the last month. Um, we just did a data as a service model um, two days ago, and then before that, it's been a while. So here we've got Equipment Purchase Return on Investment Calculator. So I try to make this pretty general and generic, but uh, the user can adjust all kinds of different assumptions to see if they're going to purchase a piece of equipment that has some benefit over time, has some initial cost, potentially financing it, and you could input all these assumptions here. We'll go through it in detail and then see what's your total ROI, IRR, net present value. And I did three sensitivity tables to show different IRRs, ROIs, and net present values based on varying uh, sensitizing a couple of the key variables. We've also got a debt schedule a monthly model and then the annual roll-up of that. Now the annual roll-up is what we're basing our IRR calculation and that uh, discount of cash flow analysis on. Because this is pretty straightforward as far as you know you've got an initial upfront cost in period zero and then you've got some benefit and costs over time with a net cash flow. We are assuming that debt is repaid in the final month whatever that might be. So if we're, you're only running this analysis for 60 months you can see here debt will be paid back on the month 60, which is end of year five. Okay. So any business that has, you know, is going to be mainly for manufacturing. Um, the, the ideal scenario is you're replacing a piece of equipment or you're going to buy equipment that helps you save money, number one. And it also might potentially help you save on uh, labor costs and become more efficient, maybe higher quality products, which can also have an effect on revenue for, for more uh, cost effective production. So all kinds of different reasons. So I try to keep it pretty high level. So you can pick here the uh, number of months you want to run the analysis for your initial costs to buy the, the equipment. You also might have some installation and setup costs. You've got potential financing here, which you don't have to use. You could zero this out. And that's completely fine. And you can see as we change variables here in the model, the sensitivity tables will update. Because they are sensitizing these variables here, but then they're running the rest of the model through to see what happens. So if you change a variable that's not on here, you're gonna get a change in all of these. Uh, you know, for example, it's running this scenario based on 60% finance. Now, if it's 20%, that changes the scenario for all three of these. So financing costs, the loan term, <clears throat> interest rate. You've also got monthly ongoing costs of the equipment. So you might have to maintenance it. You have energy, you know, electric uh, to run it. Potentially, you've got monthly repairs possibly supplies and materials. I just put an extra slot here. So you've got a couple different things that you could update the naming of these and the amounts. Obviously these are just arbitrary amounts, um, but ongoing monthly costs. You've also got maybe employee training costs. So I just did, you know, five employees, their costs to get them trained up to three months. You can see those are going to pop in right here in row 22. Now, if you just want to fill out one row and say, this is my to train all employees and just pop it in there and it could all be in month one or two or three, um, that's fine. You don't have to use all the boxes. So that's all the, the acquisition, purchase and costs. Then we have benefits. So there's two main benefits you're going to get from a piece of equipment. One is potentially monthly savings on labor and two is monthly increase to revenue. For a total benefit. Then we have a salvage value here, resale value, which will happen at month 120. Okay, now a couple things. So with this, with the uh, the return and discount of cash flow analysis, here we're looking at just the total costs. So this is summing up any negative cash flows here in the monthly tab. We're also looking at any positive cash flows. That's a total benefit over the uh, analysis period. And we're looking at the total ROI, which is the total benefit less the total cost divided by the total cost. 
And then we've also got the IRR, which is taking into account the timing of when you're getting the cash flows back relative to, your, to the initial purchase of the piece of equipment. This is a little bit more of an advanced metric if you're not a finance person, but the IRR is the more accurate. It's telling you essentially the compounded return on investment um, over time. Uh, and again, I just use the annual periods for this, so keeping it simple. We've got a discount rate and a net present value. So discount rate, we're just looking at the annual cash flows. We're discounting those back to the present value and figuring out what that is here. And then you're comparing the, the present value of all those future cash flows to the initial cost. Now, with this, a good check to make sure you've done all the calculations right is the IRR is the discount rate that you have to apply to the future cash flows to make the net present value zero. So to check it, you could always just copy this, paste it into your discount rate, and then this NPV should be zero. As you can see it is. So that means we've done the math right on our logic. Um, now for the sensitivity tables here, there's a couple different things. So one, I had to pick, you can't just target a reference, a sum of two, um, inputs. You have to target the hard coded input or else it gets wonky. So, um, and I misspelled purchase here. Whoops. P S C E. So I had to pick um, one of the variables. So I, I thought the most impactful would be the, the purchase price of the equipment, which is going across the top here. So at different purchases and then the monthly increase to revenue, I thought was the more important one, which was this. Now, if you wanted to, you could just zero out monthly savings on labor and make this the total of monthly savings to labor and revenue and just make, put that total here and ignore this. And that would work too, like for example, so this is 750, I would zero this out and then put 10,750 in here. And then what you're doing is now you're sensitizing not just the monthly increase to revenue, but also savings on labor. So whatever that total is, you could just hard code it like that. Um, and you can see it on the model, it'll come through uh, as, revenue increase, even though we know it's, it's labor plus revenue, but that's the way, cause I wanted to have both here so you could call out the separate things. But if you wanted to have the sensitivity tables, take both into account, you would just have to sum them up here in uh, C38. So that's, this shows you at different increases in revenue and different purchase prices. What's your IRR? What's your ROI? What's your net present value? <clears throat> now to test this, you can see, okay, well, this is saying at a purchase price of 400,000 and a monthly increase of revenue of 22,000, our IRR for the project and that, or the equipment should be 139.8%. So that means this IRR should be that if I put in these assumptions to the main model. So let's test it out. So if we put 400,000, and then we do a monthly savings of 22,000 for revenue. Uh, look at that, IRR 139.8, which is matches right here. So that's what this these tables are doing, is allowing you to see side by side the various return metrics with this configuration, but if you change certain variables. Uh, and the way you do this is you just go to the data ribbon, you have to there's some complications. I've done a couple different videos on it, but you just go to the data ribbon. You're going to plug in uh, these as your adjustable rows. This is your adjustable columns. This is the variable output you're trying to sensitize. And then these have to be single cell inputs. And then you just highlight it. You go to what if analysis data table, pick your rows, which is your input for. Uh, so rows would be your purchase price in this case. So I target purchase price and then columns would be your increase to revenue. You hit okay and there it is. Oops. So 
it's pretty simple uh, and you got to make sure this output formula this is the formula this is the calculation that's going to be done in all of these so you want to reference whatever that is in this case it's the IRR <clears throat> all right well that's about everything for the equipment rental analysis that I've got here if you want to purchase it the download links in the description also I will be listing it on the at smartly.com under the accountants uh, templates probably under the calculators and remember there's all kinds of templates I've done for a lot I've got got over 170 um, but these are the accounting specific ones I've done a lot of things you know cost segregation study way to average cost capital calculator depreciation recapture all sorts of things inventory staffing um, budgeting receivable payables and then um, if you want to see all the models check out the financial models tab at the top there's hundreds here of different usually I build startup financial models but I also do all kinds of ad hoc templates like you see today um, but a lot of these are startup financial forecasting and feasibility models for all different industries so you can check them out I do offer bundles so you can buy uh, if you go to the bundles tab these are all the different big bundles you get and um, you can click on them to see what's all included if you just want to buy everything go to the home page click this little colorful image here you can buy all the templates I've ever built for $9.99 and they include everything that I will build in the future as well so lifetime license to all all things smart helping alrighty take it easy I'll see you guys on the next one